that all his followers may be one. This prayer unfortunately has not been followed by his people who call themselves followers of Jesus Christ. In all our endeavors, it is our purpose. We should have pursued this goal in this prayer that all his followers may be one as he, Jesus, is one with the Father. We rather see sex and these divisions have caused a lot of harm to the Christendom. And we want to remind ourselves that it does not come from God. And we, as we have been admonished to refrain from sectarianism, we should do well to try to find or identify whether we are finding ourselves in sex or not. Because of that, we try to identify the sectarian spirit. The sectarian spirit, and so that we measure ourselves, and the Bible is saying that we should keep measuring and scrutinizing ourselves to find out whether we are in the truth. For all we know, we may find ourselves among sex, and God loves us that we refrain from such sectarian spirits as it is Antichrist. Last week we learned about seven characteristics of sectarian spirits and how to identify them. We did learn that sects have religious identities. They themselves find religious identities to distinguish themselves from other Christians. Sects often also focus on personalities. That instead of Jesus Christ, the focus on personalities. Personalities are what sex group follow, not Christ himself. We also learn that sex often have legal identities. They try to establish themselves legally. And uh, not because Jesus has established the church. Also for, we learned that sex demand membership in such a way that they identify themselves especially not based on the oneness of the Bible, but any means possible as society in the world would do. Demanding membership. Five, we learn sex recruit proselytes. They ensure that they make people, they recruit new ones to be like them in all forms, in a form of cloning, in such a way that the people have no freedom to think or question anything whether the Bible has really said so or not, but they clone others, just as the Jews were doing, and instead teaching for doctrine the commandments of men. They recruit proselytes. Again, we say sects are often competitive. They are competitive, struggling for position among themselves. They like big titles, big names, and they pursue such. Then also, we ended by saying sex always build fences. They try to build fences around themselves so as to distinguish them from others by any means possible. Distinguishedness. Today we continue to look at such identification mass of sex. For our purpose is to flee. Because Jesus Christ will crush at the end of the age. All those who are trying to destroy his church in the form of mentioning his name. But inwardly they have formed sex. So we want to look at other identification marks of sectarian spirits. And the eighth one is sex maintain comfort zones. Sex maintain comfort zones. The irony of sectarianism is that it is emotionally more secure than walking by faith and trusting in the word of God. The sectarian finds more comfort in maintaining the heritage or traditions of the past than in searching the scriptures in order to continue the discovery of new teaching in the word of God. 
And because of this, it is easy to fall into the trap of being a saint, rather than walking by faith. For they are not even interested in learning new things. The Bible is a book of books that no matter what you think you know, continually searching and with prayer, open our thoughts and understanding in deeper meaning to love this wonderful Savior and to understand what is required of us. Sex do the contrary. They rather follow traditions of forefathers in such a way that they guide jealously those traditions without questioning, without studying the Bible. Whether in the first place those traditions are even biblical or whether as we keep on searching for the truth we may come out with what God expects of us. No such sex do such no thing. They simply find comfort in following a legalistic pattern of behavior. Seeing the forefathers of our faith establish the pattern, then it is easy to follow the pattern of our forefathers' faith. When churches start quoting as authority their forefathers rather than the scriptures, then we know that we have a sex. In such sex, Leaders are usually sent to the schools that represent the sect in order to guarantee that their future leaders know the pattern of faith of the forefathers. The diplomas that hang on the walls of the sectarian leader therefore are a stamp of approval that the said leader has agreed to believe and promote the identified trademarks of the sect. We feel very comfortable when we walk into the office of the sectarian preacher and the diploma from the sex colleges and universities hang on its wall, not based on the word of God. Establishing a comfort zone of legal religiosity was the problem with the sect of Pharisees in Israel during the days of Jesus. Jesus confronted the Pharisees on the matter of legal comfort by saying in Mark chapter 7 verse 9, Mark 7 9, quote, All too well you reject the commandment of God so that you may keep your own tradition, unquote. Jesus' illustration of the rejection of the commandment of God was in their tradition, heritage, Pharisees, for they say, If a man will say to his father or mother, Whatever I have that will help you parents is common, that is to say, given to God, Mark 7, 11. The financial assistance to their children were to give to their parents was absconded by the religious leaders, the Pharisees. They conveniently pronounced that such assistance was common, that is dedicated to God. Since this was a traditional teaching, the Pharisees were in the comfort zone of their legal theology that had been handed down to them by their forefathers. Of course, when something was dedicated to God, it was given to them as God's representatives. The sinlessness. There is a great deal of comfort in the fact that our leadership is perpetuated by the certification of our schools that are supported by our churches. We need to rethink and research whether what we are studying is in line with the Word of God. When we call ourselves Pentecostals, Charismatics, and establish schools to that tradition, so that we would say that for us we are Pentecostals, and therefore this is our schools, and we believe this, and no matter what, that is what we teach. Whether it is true in the Bible, if we call ourselves charismatics, and so we've established schools charismatically in such a way that we will not listen to any other view, whether the Bible really talks about charismatism, and is that a way of Christian life, where we call ourselves as Protestants, and we establish Protestant schools of training, so much that we will not search the scriptures. I will think we will follow traditions and forefathers 
Are we not building sex? Brethren, ladies and gentlemen, when Jesus prayed that all his followers be united, he was asking us to be united upon this one and single word of God. For it is the word that unites all. And therefore it is important for us to search the scriptures. To find out whether we are in the truth. Rather than building fences. Rather than maintaining comfort zones. Without studying. In Acts chapter 4 verse 13. We think that this is not what the disciples taught. Because we are considered ignorant. And unlearned men by the religious establishment. Brethren, all the apostles had when they went forth as messengers for Jesus was Jesus and his word. Jesus and his word was all that they presented to the world. In John chapter 14 verse 26 and in John chapter 16 verse 13 when Jesus promised of the coming of another comforter, the Holy Spirit, he did say that the Holy Spirit will come and testify of him, Jesus. He will come and testify of him, Jesus. The Bible did not say the Holy Spirit was coming on his own to do his own thing. He was coming to testify of me, Jesus. And all that he has heard of me, he will come and testify. Unfortunately, we have deviated into a different sectarianism where we upgrade, we, we, we brand the Holy Spirit to be a form of something and then we hear the story. We are in the era of the Holy Spirit. Jesus' time is gone. He had finished and he said the Holy Spirit so we are in the era. What are we teaching? And so we go sex and schools under this charismatism and Pentecostalism. And we will be deceiving ourselves and will not set the scriptures that the Holy Spirit was sent to talk about Jesus. Jesus, Jesus all the way. The purpose of the coming of the Holy Spirit was for Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit helped the apostles to write the word of God to complete it and the Spirit continued with us. And the more the Spirit continued with us, it reminds us of the preaching of the one and only Jesus Christ. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all the way. And so if we are questioning ourselves of what we believe, not just what we believe of our fathers, or who establish those sects, but what we believe by the word of God, it will do us a lot of good. Brethren, we would assume that today this is still all that one needs to be a messenger for Jesus. Teaching about Jesus and his word. There is no such thing in the New Testament that one must be ordained in order to be qualified to go forth and preach the gospel. Only sects depend on the ordination of their preachers in order that they validate who can preach for them. The stainlessness. It is time we open up and let the Bible fight for itself. It is time we come up with the truth and let the Bible fight for itself. All sectarianist walls should be broken by this united word of God. Distinguish listeners. Again, apart from sex, maintaining comfort zone, sex also use unique names. They use unique names. Names that try to distinguish them from others. Instead of Jesus Christ establishing his church, they try to use names for divisive purposes. And even to the extent that when people realize, they can even think of using the name of Jesus, but in a divisive sense. Because they will not want to embrace anybody who will want to also share the truth and worship together. They are not ready. Their purpose of using a name is to bring divisive tendency and protect or distinguish them from others so that they will continue to be a sect and continue to recruit proselytes. And that is their mindset. That is unfortunate. 
in order to guarantee loyalty to a particular group. Sectarian use names in order to identify their party of adherence. Sex can be very inventive concerning the use of names. We have on our files the names such as Jesus Celebration Church, New Life Assembly of God Church, The Alliance Church, Christ Intervention Church, Bible Evangelical Church, and what have you. Names, 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 so innovative that we will bring upon ourselves and bring division. Now today, you will hear a church has been established. And we don't fear by putting any name because it is a sex sorrow. And we are so bold to identify our so-called church we've established with any name of our choice. You wonder. And so sex keep on coming. And the division keep on perpetuating. We are not ready to sit down. To search for the truth. And pursue Jesus' prayer. In John 17, 20-21. That they may all be one. As I am one with you, O Father. That they may also all. Be one. Distinguished listeners. The problem in using a unique name in order to identify a unique assembly of people is that when individuals assemble under that name, they lose their individuality in their relationship with Jesus. When Jesus said that he was the vine and the apostles were the branches, he was not talking about groups as branches but individuals, according to John chapter 15 verse 5. So when people quote this to justify denominationalism and sectarianism, they have gotten it all wrong. In John chapter 15 verse 5, when Jesus said he was the vine and we are the branches, that we stood for the individual human beings, not the churches. Our relationship as a member of the body of Christ is direct and individual with Jesus. Our relationship is not through a unique assembly of people that come together under a unique name. Paul referred to our individual relationship with Christ as members of the body when he stated in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 18 to 20. 1 Corinthians 12, 18 to 20, and I read, But now God has set the members each one of them in the body, just as he has desired. And if they were all one member, where would be the body? But now there are many members, but one body. Unquote. The same wastelessness. The organic body of Christ exists because of the individual members. The members do not exist because the body exists. There would be no body if there were no members. When the first believer came out of the waters of baptism in AD 30, on the day of Pentecost, the body of Christ was born. It was born because repentant believers on earth submitted to one the kingdom reign of Jesus from heaven. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Philippians 2, 5 through 11. And when they submitted in obedience to the gospel, they became Christians. Acts 11.26 Acts 11.26 Baptized believers, therefore, individually live under the name Christian and simply that. Christian and simply that. First Peter chapter 4, verse 16. First Peter 4, 16. Distinguished listeners. Regardless of where we are assembled any day of the week, we still have a personal and individual relationship with Jesus as a member of his body, and thus live as a Christian. The body does not exist because of its assemblies. The place where members may be on Sunday does not infringe on their personal relationship with Jesus. Neither does it determine their membership of the body. If it did, then we will be questioning 
a very clear concept that Jesus made in John chapter 4, verse 21 to 24. John 4, 21 to 24, when he said, God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Whatever they are as unique individuals, Christians. John 4, 24. This means that neither on a unique mountain place, nor in a favorite city place, as Jerusalem, is the true worship of individual Christians to be confined. But in every place, individual individuals can pour out their hearts in worship. Our worship of God is not validated by a unique place, nor by assembly under the name of a particular sectarian name regardless of the origin of the name. When one is added to the body of Christ by God, he is a member of the worldwide body of Christ every hour and every day of his life. It is important that as a result of this commitment, that he is persecuted because of the name of Christian. The name Christian should be fought and sought after. It is a simple name that identifies one as a believer in Christ. It is the name Christian that should be manifested in our lives, that we have a direct relationship with Jesus Christ. It is not about individual names. It is not about special powers given to some people that they may be able, as they claim, to redeem us from our bondage of curses. It is not like that. Christianity, when you look upon it now, leaves much to be desired. And whether we will call it Christianity itself, it is very sad that when you listen to what is going on, when you look at what is going on, when you hear what is going on, and a lot of people keep on following, it is very sad that Christ came to die to redeem mankind. But the good news is that there are still people around who are seeking for the truth to have a direct relationship with Jesus Christ. There are people who say no to sectarianism. I will want you to be one of them. Wherever you find yourself, you should endeavor to worship God in spirit and in truth. There are people who follow the dictates of the word of God, still searching the scriptures. To find the truth and live by it. There are people who rely on the grace of Jesus Christ. To guide them daily as they find themselves so weak to do anything on their own. There are people who daily search the scriptures. Who want you to do such. So that we bring down this tower. This tower of Babel in the name of tradition. In the name of individuals, in the name of people who have turned the church to be magic, magic place. People who are entrenching all magic tricks to deceive people. We are to the extent of people who have used the church as business and therefore are protecting it under the name of sectarianism by any means possible. Deceiving people to the extent of chewing grass. Deceiving people of even drinking the water washed from a photograph. Deceiving people, people and people, proclaiming what God has not said. Terrifying people, putting fears in the hearts of people so that they will use them and dupe them with huge sums of money. People destroying people marriages. People deceiving families. Breaking divisions among families among uh, um, families, among friends, and among all uh, even married couples. This is what we see. And this is not the kind of followers that Jesus prayed for. Why? Because we have alienated ourselves from the true vine, Jesus Christ. We have allowed ourselves by these charlatans and people who deceive others to deceive us to the point that we have been alienated from the true source, the vine. And instead, we are identifying those sects by names and by their, their magical prowess that they use.
to deceive themselves and others. It is time we stood up. It is time we said enough is enough. The simplified Christianity is here with us. And as today we've learned, we've learned that the comfort zone is one of the key areas that sectarians seek to identify themselves. And also with unique names. As we add this to all that we have learned, God willing we shall continue. But day by day we want to say no to sectarianism. Day by day we want to open the avenue Jesus has opened already. To have a direct relationship with him. And you, have you ever thought why the tent in the temple got on? Because at first nobody could see the inner holy of holies. And the temple got on when Jesus says, I have paid the price in full. It is finished. Paving the way for everyone to have a direct relationship with him. Free of charge. Why do we handle ourselves to so-called names, so-called magicians, that we think they are men of God and women of God, instead of having a direct relationship with God, calling ourselves simply a Christian, and relying on this wonderful name, so that we shall be saved. Oh, brethren, God loves us, and is opening our eyes and hearts, that we really look at ourselves, and ask whether we are in a sex or in Christ. And I think that the better earlier we did this, the better it would have been for us. It is not too late if we hear our voice. We are calling you to worship God in spirit and in truth. Have a direct relationship with Jesus. He is the good shepherd. All those who came before him after him are thieves and robbers. This wonderful name, Jesus, and he is the one who will follow. If you follow him, therefore, then you need to listen to his voice in his word written for us. Not through any other means of any new revelation coming anywhere. He has given everything to us in his word, the Bible. And as we keep on having continual meditation with him, praying to God through Jesus, and reading the scriptures, searching, and doing his will, is all that is asking for us. For he will will in us his grace in such a manner that he will do exceedingly beyond all that we think and ask in our lives. In this world and the world to come. Oh, simplify Christianity. Thank you, oh God, for such a simplified Christianity of no cost. We pray that you do not allow ourselves to be deceived by people who want to make it expensive. Those who want to deceive us, seeing how simplified your word is, they want to do everything possible to use it to amass wealth for themselves. Deceiving themselves and their followers. For the Bible says that when a blind man leaves blind, both shall fall in the pit. It is important you woke up to the reality of the simplified new covenant. The covenant that is so unifying. No sectarianism. Let's fight. Do everything possible in the name of Jesus Christ to be simplified Christian. To fight for the oneness of the followers of Christ. Wherever you find yourself, let this be our dream. And the Lord Almighty shall bless us. Go with the next week. We shall continue. Once again, this has been the Oracles of God radio broadcast. A biblical program that is run and sponsored by the Churches of Christ. Which come your way every Wednesday, 5.30 a.m. On Radio Universe 105.7 FM. Make a day with us. Say time. God with the next week. As God continues to unravel his priceless oracles. You are warmly invited to worship with churches of Christ all over the country. The pillar of truth where an unadulterated word of God is shared and God is worshipped in spirit and truth. You may want to contact us on 024-5527-658 or send us a message on coc.radio at yahoo.com. I am your brother Eric Dako. 
Now may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify us through and through. May our own spirits, souls, and bodies become blameless at the appearing of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So we meet again. Stay richly blessed. Amen and good morning.